again, everybody. Sorry, my uh, audio seemed to have disappeared. It must have been unusual to see my lips moving and, um, and then unfortunately not hearing the sound of my voice booming over your TV or your computer screen. But I'll introduce myself again. My name is Taylor and bringing you the most magical footage today is Craig. And we're off to an exceptionally good start, don't you think? Seeing the Angama Pride have a standoff with the buffalo. Now this is live, this is happening right now on the Mara Triangle, so if you do have any questions for us, you can A, either hashtag Safari Live on Twitter, or you can B, comment. No, you can't comment. Yeah, you can comment on the YouTube chat. That's exactly what you will do. We're surrounded by lions this morning with lions on termite mounds, lions laying next to the car. But I don't know if they're going to stay here for too much longer. They seem to be on the move again. So last night we spent a little bit of time with them. They roared a total of six times while we were with them. It was honestly fantastic. So I got my lion roar fix, which was really amazing because it had honestly been such a long time. And they didn't catch anything because they look a lot thinner than they did last night. The little ones don't have their big bulging bellies anymore. So hopefully some unsuspecting zebra or perhaps just one buffalo on its own is going to come wandering through this area. And it's um, good hunting ground here for the lions. They don't have to just keep chasing after uh, the animals and hope that they forget that they're there, but they can actually utilize the bits of long grass and also the small shrubs that are about. Now, Ben, you're wondering how often lion, oh, how often do lions eat? Sorry, it depends on how often they can catch something, Ben. Unfortunately, uh, lions can sometimes take a, a few goes before they're successful in catching anything. So the last time they ate was yesterday morning. We saw them finishing up a wildebeest carcass, but one wildebeest for four lionesses and too many cubs and three male lions is not really going to go far. So they had a nibble. I presume they would have attempted last night because they headed from where they are now. We were a little bit further east of this last night and they headed towards the escarpment. Now they've come back again. Can you hear the little cubs? Yeah, they're playing just to the right of us in this garden, yeah. Who are you looking for? Sorry. And there you go. And see, look at the little ones. They don't mind walking right past us. Now, Sue, you're wondering, are, do lions always look this healthy? Ah, uh, no. You know, out here, though, they, I haven't seen an emaciated lion. Uh, which is fantastic. There seems to be a lot of food around, although it's the, well, the prey is sort of moving off now, so it's going to become increasingly difficult for these lions to catch prey. They're going to have to start hunting warthogs again, which they are specialists in, and then hopefully they'll be brave enough to take on an African buffalo. Um, in South Africa, in the Sabi Sand where Tristan is driving around, we have seen thin lines, very, very thin lines, and I'm sure it gets to the point up here but it seems to be a lot more difficult to hunt down in the Sabi sand. The vegetation is, of course, slightly different, and we don't have the huge numbers of game like we do up here in, in the Mara Triangle. So, triangle. So, especially when the migration's around. It's really interesting to watch, though. I wonder if the Nkuhuma pride would have uh, stood up to those buffalo or if they would have tried to have caught one. Of course, they are specialists when it comes to catching a buffalo. They have well, superior skills uh, in bringing down those massive animals in comparison uh, to, to the lions here. I'm sure they go for buffalo, but they've got a single one out because the big herds will not tolerate lions whatsoever. And we haven't really been seeing the big herds of buffalo coming back to the northern Sabi sand, which is interesting because normally they start moving in. Maybe they still will. But look how green and lush it is. I, I remember when I first arrived, it was all golden yellow. Now it's changed. Now, Tony, you're wondering if any of these lionesses sorry, would give up their lives to protect the cubs. Uh, to an extent, they'll definitely try, but they know that there's only one of them and they can have cubs again. So I have seen it before where lions will actually just run and try and get out of there. And unfortunately, whoever's left behind has to fend for themselves. They will try though. They will try their absolute best. It's the same thing when male, new males come in and um, are going through and, and taking out all the young offspring that are not theirs. Those lionesses will try their best. They will fight. They will scrap with the males. 
but a male lion is much bigger than a female and in the end he will kill her if she is reluctant to allow them to well to um kill the cubs it's very very sad but it's just it is just one of those things and females that don't want to mate with male lions again what's the point of having them around this is the attitude of the male lions you're not going to provide me with any offspring so there's no point in you living and they kill lots and lots of females and then they go walking into the the thicker stuff now maybe they're going to rest i'm hoping not though i'm really hoping that this is just the start it's not too hot yet it's still nice and cool but uh, there isn't much prey around in the area uh, everything seems to have moved off last night there was a massive herd of buffalo around here maybe that's what they were chasing and that's why they ended up moving towards the forest is because they were heading in that direction bless you the lion had a sneeze where are you going to go this is one of the older cubs what are you going to do so Tony Two Shoes, you're wondering at what age can a lion produce his first proper roar? Well, last night was very funny, Tony, because the little ones were trying, but it just sounded more like Row! Row! as the adults were roaring. So I reckon by the time they get to about two years old, um, they'll definitely have found their voice might be a little bit scratchy, but it will just get uh will just keep improving from there but they'll do tr uh, they will try especially when the whole pride is roaring in chorus you'll see those little ones that are about a year and a half trying their absolute best and it's not a proper roar but it does sounds do come out but they'll get there eventually